lovely to stand here and look at so many smiling faces. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You are all most welcome to this very special evening to commemorate a significant milestone in the charity's history, and as well as to celebrate and acknowledge our wonderful NRAS champions, and hopefully raise some money along the way as well. Um, it was a really difficult 24 hours uh, trying to make the decision yesterday whether to go ahead or not with this event. So often we talk about loss when someone passes away, but I feel it is also important to celebrate the life of Her Majesty and what we collectively have gained from her leadership. Regardless of your views about the monarchy, there is no denying that all our lives have been enriched by having the Queen as such an inspirational role model. Our greatest tribute and mark of our respect to her will be for us all to try and emulate her sense of humanity, her work ethic, her dedication to duty and to serving others. She exemplifies the true meaning of charity and selflessness. So that is why I, we, believed she would want us to go ahead. She would want us to keep calm and carry on with this award ceremony and this commemoration of what we, NRAS, have achieved over these years, 21 years. The NRAS champions with us this evening exemplify some and many of Her Majesty's qualities of service to others, tireless commitment, acts of charity and love. <clears throat> so yes, I am confident that Her Majesty would have approved of us carrying on this evening. So as you heard, we are filming the evening and sharing photos. Um, so just be off camera if you do any misbehaving, that's all I'm saying. Um, before we get started, I want to introduce some very important people. Firstly, may I ask all of my wonderful NRAS colleagues to stand up so everyone can see you. If anyone has any, come on, where are you? Don't be shy. I am incredibly lucky to work alongside all these very hard-working, dedicated people. And thank you very much for those particularly instrumental in organising this evening's event. So, having put the spotlight on my colleagues, I think it's only right and proper that I should do so also to the members of the NRAS trustee board. So, if I could ask all of you to stand up so people know who you are. So Simon, Jim, Richard, Peter, Lindsay, Rich and Anna, thank you all for your guidance, wise counsel and friendship. <laughs> Don't let that go to your heads, sit down. <laughs> I'm, I am also going to be rather self-indulgent. Why not? I've got the microphone. So there are also two incredibly uh, special people in my life. My very handsome debonair son and my beautiful daughter Hannah, who's right at the back for some reason. I don't know why she's down there. Um, thank you both for being my very own personal support team, uh, which has been really brought into... Um, you know, I've really needed over these last few years. You've both been my rock, and especially over the, as I said, these past challenging years. Thank you. So, Hannah doesn't know this, but she was also nominated by a helpline caller for an NRAS Champion Award. And this is what her nominator, said 
A couple of times I felt like I couldn't fight anymore and I wanted to give up the struggle. She supported me, gave me excellent advice and gave me the strength to keep going. When I was finally diagnosed, she stayed in touch and continued providing support. I have so much to thank her for. Well done, Hannah. So equally, this exemplifies the brilliant work that all the NRAS information and support team do. It is therefore no wonder that our wonderful helpline team have been shortlisted for a prestigious third sector award in the category of frontline, um, sorry, frontline team of the year. So well done. <clears throat> in the words of Mark Twain, the two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. NRAS was born 21 years ago, and every day it is clear why. Every day, people with RA and JIA, their families, their health professionals, are benefiting from the NRAS services and advocacy. NRAS will never give up striving for life without limits for those living with these incurable autoimmune conditions. Many of you here this evening or watching this recording will have benefited from our work of your society. We've driven changes and improvements to, in access to care and treatment guidelines. We're supporting under-resourced UK rheumatology units and we're freely supporting, uh, providing supported self-management resources. We're walking the walk with people with RA and JIA every day. That's why NRAS was born. We've, and when I say we, I don't mean we, the staff, I mean all of those in, involved, our members, our volunteers, our trustees, our supporters, our industry partners, our researchers and our medical advisors, we've collectively achieved so much in just 21 years but our work is no means done. We're living, living through challenging and unprecedented times. War, COVID, cost of living crisis, NHS challenges, mental health epidemic, all have had a huge impact on charities like ours. Which is why I make absolutely no excuse in asking you to dig deep tonight and give generously. NRAS receives no statutory or government funding, we have to raise every single penny ourselves as we strive to achieve our ambitious vision. So thank you in advance of your generosity. Now I'd like to ask Simon, our Chair of Trustees, to add his welcome and to read a message from our founder patron, Professor Gabriel Panayi, who couldn't join us this evening as he's recovering from surgery at home in Corfu. So Simon, over to you. Thank you, Claire. Uh, good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to NRAS's 21st birthday party. Thank you all for coming. I hope that despite the uh, somber and momentous background going on, this event can appropriately uh, celebrate the charity's 21 years and recognize the achievements of our champions in supporting people with rheumatoid arthritis and juvenile idiopathic arthritis. We're here to recognize the service of others and also to emerge at the end hopefully considerably poorer. It's a particular honor for me to be opening the event uh, representing the uh, Board of Trustees as, as Chair. NRAS has always been dear to my heart for its focus on the patient above all else, for its family feel, for its effectiveness and its ability to punch above its weight, and its determination to deliver the very best support to those living with inflammatory arthritis. I'm not actually going to take very much of your time this evening as we have some more important speakers to, uh, to follow, but I would like to say a few thank yous, and also, as Claire mentioned, to read out a short message uh, from Professor Panayi. Um, firstly, 
I think all our thanks are due to Elsa Bosworth, who famously founded NRAS. who famously founded NRAS at her kitchen table all those years ago. Uh, and without her vision and energy, we just wouldn't be here tonight. And more to the point, many thousands of sufferers from RA and JIA and their families would not have been helped to gain a better understanding of their condition and how best to manage it. Our thanks are also due to uh, Claire Jacklin, our remarkable CEO, who has led the organization of this event uh, in itself, no small uh, task, I, I think you'll agree, and who very soon after taking over uh, the charity was faced with the, char with the challenge of leading NRAS through the pandemic. The way NRAS has coped through that period and the way the charities emerged the other side was in no small measure uh, down to Claire's balanced and proactive leadership. Lastly, our particular thanks are owed to all of NRAS's tireless staff, volunteers and supporters such as yourselves. They truly make it happen and without their continuing efforts and goodwill, there would be no charity. So if I could beg your patience just a little while longer, I'm going to read out the message from Professor P Panayi, the founder patron of NRAS. So the professor said, uh, when Elsa first consulted me for her rheumatoid, she spent more time complaining of the very low profile that rheumatoid arthritis had in the eyes of politicians. <laughs> the limelight was always taken by osteoarthritis, and when policymakers heard of the millions with osteoarthritis, they positively quaked at the cost implications. At that time, RA was about to enter a new phase in treatment based on the new knowledge of the mechanism, joint of mechanism of joint inflammation and joint destruction. I can't emphasize enough what a very exciting time it was for patients, clinicians, and investigators. These new treatments, familiar to all of us now as biologics, were not only more effective than the classical treatments, but vastly more expensive. To get that sort of money out of the treasury required political clout. Elsa believed, quite correctly, that this money could only be unlocked by patient pressure. So she set up NRAS. I helped by providing the scientific backup as chief scientific officer. Elsa, with her very competent, enthusiastic, and industrious co-workers, became a byword for a successful charity. I've no doubt that the more effective treatment of RA with the newer therapies is due to the campaigning efforts of NRAS. I'm sure that NRAS will continue to be a successful organization. One of the proudest moments of my professional career has been to be linked with NRAS. And I write these words sitting by my swimming pool in Cyprus. I raise my glass of ouzo and I drink a toast. Happy 21st birthday, NRAS. I'm raising my glass to drink to the health of NRAS on the 21st anniversary of the founding. There will be many more such anniversaries and I drink to them all, to NRAS. Thank you, Simon. And next, it gives me great pleasure to ask the debonair, the delightful Professor Peter Taylor, our Chief Medical Advisor, trustee and loyal friend of NRAS, to say a few words. Well, I'm not sure if uh, the right person has stepped up after that wonderful description, but thank you very much indeed. Well, first of all, congratulations to all of you. 21 years, that's quite something, and in particular to Elsa, the founder of this extraordinary organization. But of course, it falls with a, a certain poignancy because we're just a stone's throw away from the castle. And it really makes me think about the word that I would try and find to best summarize some of the characteristics of today. And I wonder how many of you have received through your letterbox or into your email inbox 
one of those surveys from NRAS. Now, anybody here received a survey? I'm sure if you're uh, not putting your hands up, you perhaps aren't telling the truth. But many of us are that uh, have received these surveys. And are you familiar with the one where you select a word to describe your particular sentiment about something? and then they create a word cloud. Have you seen those? So several heads nodding around the room. So if I were to choose a word that for me epitomizes the events of this evening and the context in which they're set, it would be a single word and it would be the word admiration. Now, unfortunately, our English language has become somewhat impoverished because it's used in such a poor way by many outlets. But what does the word admiration actually mean? Well, it has two parts. It has ad, A-D, at the beginning, which we all know means moving towards. And then it has an interesting word, miration, which for Latin scholars or those who know medieval French, you might be aware that it means to stand in wonder of. Now, in fact, it has the same root as miracle. Uh, and so we have this word that admiration is that we stand in wonder of whatever the object of admiration might be. And, and the reason I think that this word captures the essence of this evening so well is that every one of you is somebody who is being admired by others through your work for the charity. But of course, Her Majesty above all has been somebody I think who is universally admired. And she had some extraordinary talents. I never had the pleasure of meeting her, but of course uh, I did in fact meet uh, one of the members of her family, Sarah and I, my wife Sarah here in the front, and I met Princess Margaret many years ago because she was in fact the patron of the Kennedy Institute of Rheumatology where we treated the very first patient with anti-TNF. And, and the interesting thing about that was that when it came time to use the lavatories, there was one particular door which none of us were allowed to go into. And we all assumed, of course, that it was where the cleaner kept their equipment. But in fact, there was a special marble toilet on a gold dais there, uh, which was exclusively for the use of our patrons. So there you have it. Um, but I think part of the Queen's wisdom also linked to her down-to-earth wisdom. And I heard on the radio this morning, of course, she had her first corgi as a little girl. And her sister, Princess Margaret, who we've just been discussing, kept dachshunds, apparently, or dachshunds, as some people call them. And, uh, of course, she then created the doggy. Now, any of you with a little bit of imagination at a, a meeting like this, where perhaps you've already had your first glass of uh, Biblius um, liquid, uh, then actually you might wonder how on earth this uh, union was actually achieved. Uh, and, in fact, Her Majesty was asked this question, and she said, well, it's very simple. We just use a little stool. Um, so there you have it, a very down-to-earth sort of figure. But in fact, there's another story I like. I met another remarkable person who I admire many years ago when I was at Charing Cross Hospital. And this particular individual was a surgeon. And like many surgeons, perhaps there are some in the room, so I have to be careful what I say. But they're often people of few words, but work miracles again. We're back to that root, miracles, with their hands. And in fact, this particular individual would go to war-torn parts of the world. And he was invited, this came under the notice of Her Majesty, who invited him to come and speak to her. And the poor chap was so tongue-tied, he just didn't know what to say or what to do. And apparently, she sat him down quietly in a corner and gave him a ginger biscuit and said, here, try and give this to one of the corgis. And apparently, this went down so well that after that, the conversation flowed easily. And there, I think, is a beautiful example, in a way, of some of the work that you who work for NRAS do, that we can put people at their ease when they're people living with rheumatoid arthritis or JIA, and really bring this down to a human level, explain the complexities, and actually the wonder today, and thanks, no, in fact, to many of you in this room, David and others, who have pioneered new treatments, um, you can look a patient in the eye today and tell them with absolute honesty that their outlook is brilliant. Now, that was not true 21 years ago, but it is absolutely true today, thank heaven. But before I embarrass myself by saying too much, my final word about this, perhaps, 
There's been this extraordinary advance in understanding the pathobiology of disease, really extraordinary, and a concomitant advance in pharmacology that's led to the biologic therapies, and now the so-called small molecules. These are tablets which have an amazing level of efficacy for the conditions we treat. However, we're also moving into an age of automation. We have algorithms that tell us how we should treat and sometimes what we should use to treat. And whilst that's laudable in a way, it sometimes dehumanizes. And so one of my favorite quotes, as some of you may know, is that the good physician treats the disease, but the great physician or the great nurse and those who are being awarded tonight actually represent this. The great physician treats the patient who has the disease. And there's a world of difference. And NRAS has been right at the front of bringing that ability into medicine. How Elsa and Claire and others have done this. Uh, forever we're having our rules changed in the NHS, but somehow they do it by events like this. They create champions, they encourage, they build people up. There's none of this sort of browbeating that goes on in certain other quarters I won't mention. So there you have it. Um, NRAS is a most extraordinary organization. And just think what the next 21 years is going to bring. So I salute each and every one of you who's involved with the organization and particularly express my admiration tonight for Elsa, for Claire, for all the NRAS team and all those who are going to be recipients and absolutely deservedly so uh, of an award. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Peter. Um, I'm quite overwhelmed uh, by your kind words. Um, Elsa, I'm not quite sure how on earth you're going to follow that. But before you know, we kick off the rest of our festivities, I really want to introduce our esteemed founder and national patient champion. It is only fitting that you bring our welcome speeches uh, this evening to a close. So Elsa Bosworth, MBE, if you don't mind. Good evening, everybody, and um, a very, very warm welcome to you all. Uh, thank you for coming this evening. And um, goodness, Peter, you're a very hard act to follow. <laughs> uh, but thank you for all your amazing support over many years. And also, David, another of our um, medical advisors, medical, chief medical advisors, uh, following Gabriel. Um, Claire mentioned the, the MBE, and I have to say that um, the events of the last 24 hours uh, have caused me to cast my mind back to um, a day in April in 2016. Um, it was a, a beautiful spring, sunny day, blue skies, and uh, me and my family went uh, up the long walk to Windsor Castle to get my MBE, which was very much, I felt, a team MBE, not just for me, but for the whole NRAS team. And um, you don't know, uh, when you go to get uh, an award like this, uh, who the royal is going to be on the occasion. And uh, we, we arrived and went into the car park, and I said to one of the car park attendants, do you know who's on today? And. Uh, <laughs> She said, uh, yeah, you've got Her Majesty. And I just felt, wow, because I think she did 28 investitures that year and only four were um, given by Her Majesty. So it was a great thrill for me to have the opportunity to meet her, albeit briefly, but I had a couple of minutes when I could tell her a little bit about the work of NRAS. So um, it's a very sad day. When she, uh, when she died yesterday. Um, however, this evening is a very special evening for everyone at NRAS as it marks our coming of age. And we're delighted to be celebrating with all of you tonight. We're going to be presenting awards to some very deserving NRAS champions. And I would like to congrat congratulate everyone who's getting a champions award tonight in a period when so much of our daily news is negative it's really good to celebrate some of the fantastic and dedicated care and practice by rheumatology health professionals across the UK. 
and to award one of our amazing volunteers who represents the best of what volunteers bring to organizations like NRAS. NRAS started off, uh, I, think, I think Claire said uh, earlier, from our home in Maidenhead as I sat in front of a blank piece of paper in January 20, uh, 2001 and imagined the kind of organization I would have wanted to support me when I was diagnosed. We launched in October that year, and I'm so pleased that some of the people who were at our launch 21 years ago are here tonight. It's sad that Gabriel is unable to be here as he was critical to NRAS getting started at all. Back in 2000, Gabriel was professor of rheumatology at Guy's, running the clinical trial of one of the, the, one of the new anti-TNF biologic drugs at the time, which Peter has spoken of. I was on that trial and that drug was to change my life. But he was then also president of the British Society for Rheumatology and it was his encouragement and promise of backing and support that gave me the confidence that I needed to start NRAS, so thank you, Gabriel. You don't know when you start something new whether, how or if it will be successful. And if you'd asked me over 20 years ago where I thought NRAS would be in 2022, I would have had absolutely no idea that we would be where we are, the leading patient organization in our field in the UK, and with an international reputation for excellence and achievement which all of us associated with NRAS can be proud of. In those early days, working from home, when I was answering the phone, licking the stamps and making the tea, almost everyone with RA that I spoke to said how valuable it was to be able to talk to someone who had the disease and really understood what they were going through. It was this reaction which spurred the start of our volunteer network in 2003, when Sue Oliver, our chief nurse advisor at the time, who's here tonight, Lorraine Tanner, our helpline manager, uh, who was our first full-time employee and, and then stayed with us for 10 years, also here tonight. We went around the UK and held open meetings to raise awareness of NRAS and to recruit people with RA who were interested in volunteering with us. Today we have approximately 375 brilliant volunteers, some of whom have been trained to provide very specific one-to-one -one peer support on the phone as part of our Here For You service, which I so wish I'd had access to following my diagnosis approximately 43 years ago. Things were very different then. The way the disease was treated, and the po was the polar opposite to the way we treat RA today. We didn't have the established multidisciplinary teams that we have now, and we certainly didn't have the wide range of advanced therapies available currently. As a consequence, I sustained a huge amount of irreversible damage quite quickly. And looking back over those years and all the surgeries, it's often the mental and the emotional anguish which I recall more than all the physical pain and I'm sure others with RA here tonight will resonate with that. I can remember the fear and the isolation that I felt, and if NRAS had been around then, I know how much difference it would have made to get that personal support, reassurance, and expert knowledge. The need was great back then, and it remains so today. Yes, things have dramatically improved, but in spite of the advanced treatments and better care, RA is not yet sorted. Many people don't respond adequately to numbers of therapies or they lose response over time, so more treatments are needed. Access to best, to best care still varies across the UK, and our NHS workforce is in crisis. So understanding the importance of and having access to self, supported self-management resources, being educated about your disease, and emotionally supported in your journey with RA or JIA are core components of what the team at NRAS do every day. And these services will be especially important as we adapt to a new landscape of post-COVID recovery and adapted service delivery. I'd like to say a very heartfelt thank you to everyone who has supported NRAS, both past and present, whether you're a patron, a member, a volunteer, a fundraiser, a medical advisor, an employee, a trustee, a corporate member, or other stakeholder we would not be celebrating our 21st birthday tonight without all of your support over the years. I also need to thank my family whose love, encouragement, and support 
were essential to me, being able to put in the hours that I did, particularly my husband Brian. And I'm also delighted that our daughter Anna, who became Director of London Arts and Health earlier this year, joined the NRAS family in June when she became a trustee. Finally, I would like to say how very proud I am of what Claire has achieved since taking over as CEO in 2019, especially as we had no idea then what was coming down the line. Her passion, her commitment, her sheer hard work and her humor have made a real impact and I'm so pleased to let you know that she has been shortlisted in this year's Third Sector Awards as Rising CEO, a much deserved honor. I hope you... I hope you have a wonderful evening, and as Claire said, please dig deep. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elsa. As John F. Kennedy once said, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live them. So to show all our appreciation and gratitude to this woman who, is, who just gets on with it and makes things happen. May I ask you all to be upstanding as I propose a toast to Elsa. Without her, en, without, en, without her, Enras would not have been born. A visionary, an activist, an inspiration, a mentor, a relentless warrior, and for those with inflammatory arthritis, and a flipping hard act to follow. <laughs> An all-round good egg, my very dear friend, Elsa. Elsa. Elsa.